For those of you who don't know, I am currently making a game known as Enter the Cosmos. In my previous video, I touched on lighting and the universal render pipeline. In this video, I have many new features to show you, such as new animations, new particle effects, a new camera shake mechanic, and so much more. Last week, I uploaded a new style of video known as In a Life of a Game Developer Whilst in Lockdown. I would love for you to check it out if you haven't already. Here's a clip from the episode. Ready for work. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. The first thing I decided to do was to create the walking animation for the main character. I took inspiration from my previous games known as Afterlife and Tearfork Manor and made my animation look as smooth as possible. As you can see, the walking animation is based on 6 frames which allows the animation to flow beautifully into the next frame. After animating the character walking, I decided to add a broom into the scene and which you'll eventually be able to pick up. So, with that in mind, I designed the walking animation with the broom in your hand as well, but it is not yet in the game. The sprites are ready, but it has not been put inside the game. The next thing I animated was the TV. There is a total of 5 frames which will be used to animate the TV as well as a volume bar on the TV which the player can control. But for this demonstration of the animation I will only be using 3 frames. So my idea of the TV is it's going to be a TV news broadcast of events which are happening inside the world. One of the frames would be an error screen as if it has just been taken off the air. The other frame will be a do not panic type screen, then followed by a frame which is complete utter darkness. In the release version, the TV will have much more of an impact with much more interesting frames which will tell the beginning of the story. Uh, mate, you can't watch that, this is the devlog. I have also added two small, subtle animations to the game which helps the game world feel more believable the ventilation fan which acts as a background object, and Mayo the dog. Both use two frame sequence animations, but in the future, I'm hoping to animate Mayo a little bit more by letting him walk around the screen. I'm also trying to incorporate a way that the player can interact with Mayo by stroking him or maybe even eventually feeding him. I did have a quick experiment with some animated lighting effects, but I'm not ready to show this off just yet. After doing the animation, I thought it'd be a cool idea to experiment with particle effects. My goal with the scene is to make it resemble Earth as much as possible. I wanted the lighting to be realistic, I wanted the character to look realistic, and I set myself a challenge. Making realistic dust particles within my game. But why do I need realistic dust particles? Well. I thought to myself, if I could pull it off, it would look really cool within my game. So that's exactly what I did. I experimented with the particle system, I came up with a really cool dust particle system which fits the complete style of my game. As you can see, the dust particle is a tiny pixel traveling in random directions and then eventually fading out. I am very happy with how this turned out and I also added this effect on the pizza boxes to make them look like flies. This is a very subtle detail, but one which I believe will make the world feel more believable. The next feature I experimented with is Camera Shake. This is a really cool feature, which I believe will work really well within my game. I decided to experiment with the Camera Shakes, so I can incorporate this within my game. I did my research thinking that I would have to code it into my game, but then I discovered that Cinemachine actually includes a 6D shake feature, which allowed the camera to shake exactly how I wanted it to. So I turned the room into a disco room and party with Mayo. Hey, keep it down, we have a game to make. Right, so. After creating the camera shake, I attempted to get it to animate so that after a certain amount of time, the game will begin to shake more and more. I have yet to experiment with this and hopefully will be able to show you more in the coming weeks. Thank you for watching Devlog 3. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to like, comment for feedback and subscribe if you want to see more. I'm almost at 500 subscribers, which is a huge achievement in my eyes. So thank you for everyone who has been a part of this journey from the very start. Video polls are no more, 
so I would love to communicate with you on a personal level down in the comments. What would you like to see on my channel next? Would you like to see another devlog? The rise of indie developers? I'm also planning to experiment with case studies where I discuss a certain theme within a video game. So let me know what you would like to see. Thank you so much for watching. Devlog 4 will be out very soon and hopefully in that video we'll be touching on game interaction. So peace guys, we'll see you in the next one.